Welcome to Shades of Migraine, a podcast series created by the Association of Migraine Disorders. Migraine isn't black and white, it's blurry and shadowy, but there are many forces at work trying to change how we think about and deal with this disease. We hope you'll enjoy listening to a wide variety of voices, including the perspectives of both people living with migraine and those that are trying to help. Each will share their unique shade of migraine. Hi, I'm Alicia Torborg, Executive Director for the Association of Migraine Disorders. This podcast is a FaceTime interview with Haley Pushes, her brother Robert, who has had migraines since the first grade, and their mother Jeannie. While the audio and video are not the best quality, we think this wonderful family story is important to tell. Thank you, Haley, for joining us on this Friday evening. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So why don't you tell us a little bit about you? Well, I'm 13 years old, and my brother Robert is 15. Hi, Robert. Hi. And we moved to Columbus, Mississippi from Indiana because of my brother. Okay, so tell me a little bit about that. You had contacted us a couple months ago with a very special migraine-related request. So tell us, tell us uh, what brought you to AMD. Well, it's hard to see someone that you love be in pain, and the Association for Migraine Disorders helps raise awareness and help people with migraines. So my brother Robert was misunderstood because most people don't understand chronic migraines, And I just want to let people know that just because you can't see someone's pain doesn't mean it's not there. It's so true. It's so true. They often call it the invisible disease. So, Robert, Hmm. tell me a little bit about yourself and your your struggle uh, with migraine and where you are now. Um, Yeah, I'm 15 years old. Um, We just moved down here by... What was it like a almost a year and i and i started having migraines when i was in first grade i don't know how they started they just started happening for some reason and so they're better now where did you feel like they were associated with uh your environment they're better now since you made the move no uh yeah they're a lot better since we made the move the only times i ever have any severe pain i just take a a pill and I fall asleep for an hour and it's completely fine. Oh, good. I understand at one point you were homeschooled, so you were unable to, to attend school at, at, at one point. Yes, I was. It was it was for one grade. I, I was bullied at school for having the chronic migraines because they did not understand what it was at all. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, I'm happy that you're in a, in a better place now, for sure. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your story with us. So Haley, tell me a little bit about uh, what a 14-year-old young lady like yourself does in your spare time when you're not in school or studying. Well, I love to get involved in science and Latin. Um, Dance is a hobby that I love to do whenever I can. And I'm also involved in the Miss America program, which is a pageant system where you have to have a platform, which is the main topic that you want to um, let everyone know about it. And I I chose my topic to be uh, Shades for Migraine, which is run by the AMD, and it supports chronic migraine sufferers and lets them know that they're not alone, and also uh, uh, raises awareness to chronic migraines. Well, we're so glad you found us. I'm happy I did too because I actually found an organization that supports my brother and um, I'm able to have it as my platform. Yeah, that's great. And I see you're wearing the t-shirt. Thank you very much. (laughs) Tell us about some of the work and your sunglasses. I love it. Thank you. (laughs) There'll be more to come. (laughs) So tell me about some of the work that you're doing in your school. We're working on a couple of exciting things together. Well, I'm working on getting a purple day started. And purple is the color for chronic migraines. It's also red, but mostly purple. And if everyone wears purple on a specific date, then it'll raise awareness to chronic migraines. Also, 
I want to start an invisible illness chapter at my school, and there are already a few teacher, te teachers who are willing to get involved and help with the chapter. That's great. That's great. This is great work for anyone to do, but it's remarkable for a person your age to be doing this type of advocacy work. So tell me a little bit about how uh, migraine disease has impacted your family. Well, it's very difficult to see someone that you love be in pain. Our family does everything for Robert when he's sick. Um, we will try to keep the noise to a minimum and always check up on him and get him anything that he needs. And um, always try to make sure that there's no light because that can make your migraines worse. Um, and our family is just very flexible when he's um, down with a migraine. Right. Aww. So Jeannie, let's hear from you from a mother's perspective. I know it's gotta be just terrible watching a, a loved one, especially a child suffer. It is that Robert started uh, showing signs of migraine when he was very young. Uh, usually whenever I would cut his hair or anything like that, he would always protest. He never wanted anybody touching his head. And when he was probably about three, I noticed he would, he would vomit after we would mm. cut his hair. He would, you know, any kind of huge weather change, which in the Midwest is a daily thing. He just acted different, but he never, of course, could tell us in so many words right. what was wrong. So uh, it, it, it really started to build up when he uh, was in first grade. He was seven years old and he started getting these headaches. And so my husband and I, you know, of course, just thought it was growing pains or whatever. And he, he'd miss, start missing school and several times vomited at school. Uh, he would be down with a migraine for 12 to 18 hours. Mm. Uh, and then uh, his interest in extracurricular activities started to deteriorate. Uh, you know, didn't want to play sports because he would get overheated from the equipment. Like we tried football and right. he always was very good at that because he's a big kid. So he, he just hated it because he would usually end up being sick. Mm. So, uh, he had several years then that he would go, you know, in and out of school, missing many days at a time. But the worst year that he had was his seventh grade year in school. And uh, both of the kids went to a private school in Indiana. And uh, my husband and I started getting emails, phone calls from the school saying that they felt like Robert was faking it. They didn't think that the headaches that he was having were really migraines. They thought that he was trying to skip school and uh, it, this couldn't have been any further from the truth. Right. Robert was always a straight-A student, loved uh, or loves math, science, all of the really tough subjects. He was an honor student, and uh, he he won the junior high science fair, and it just it was it, it was very heartbreaking to hear right. these allegations from the teachers and the staff. So, my husband Neil and I had to go into the school and talk to the principal about his attendance and pretty much had to try to educate other adults on how severe this really was. I mean, we were at the point where we had been through three different neurologists. Robert had had an MRI, which is a really big deal to even get clearance with your insurance company on something like that because it's a very expensive test. So it wasn't like there was any possible way that this child was making these things up. So they uh, had told us that his attendance would be an issue, even though he still was a straight A student the whole entire time that he was missing all of the school. And so we decided then with his eighth grade year that we would homeschool him. And that was very difficult. I was working a full-time job that was very demanding. I worked in an engineering office at a steel mill for 22 years and was 
you know, very, very busy, uh, 50 hours a week. And Robert was at home doing his coursework pretty much on his own. It was all online. And uh, between my husband and I, we were trying to tag team his education. And he did very well. He was uh, inducted into the National Junior Honor Society during his time there. And he did a great job. It just, it was heartbreaking to watch because socially you get nothing from online school. I'd look, call it what it is, but um, any activity that he would have been able to do in a regular bricks and mortar type setting, you can't do that online. Right. Um, so uh, Robert had taken Taekwondo classes and did earn his black belt, which was a huge accomplishment. It was something that he had uh, worked for and toured for a long time. So uh, he did accomplish that. And so we just, we decided that we wanted to go on vacation and do a little science experiment of our own as a family, because I had read an article about how the Southern states could possibly help uh, people that suffer from weather triggers mm -hmm. like uh, barometric pressure or, you know, anything else. And so we read that Mich or, uh, Mississippi, Alabama, what was the other one? Hawaii. Hawaii, Florida, and Southern California were the top five places that uh, someone with weather-triggered migraines could live and possibly get relief from. So anyway, we had um, gone on vacation to the Gulf Coast since we lived in Indiana. Mississippi was about a 12-hour drive. So we went to the Gulf Coast on vacation, and we got south of the Ohio River, and Robert was like, my head feels weird. And so my husband and I thought, oh, great, he's getting sick. And so one thing led to another, and he just started talking and talking, and he was laughing, and we were looking at each other like, what is going on? Why is he, you know, so excited? And so we were gone for about 10 days, and he never got sick. Yeah. So we we thought, well, okay, the, the real test will be when we go back home. So we weren't even back in Indiana for 12 hours and he was down with about an 18 hour migraine. It was at that point that we realized that our hypothesis really was true, that we thought for sure that it was the weather and we were right. So uh, my husband and I worked at a company that's uh, is based in Fort Wayne, Indiana. We started the process of trying to transfer to the other plant because we knew that's where Robert really needed to be. Right. And we were very worried about moving the kids. Finally, in March of 2017, uh, my husband uh, was called and had an interview at the other facility uh, here in Columbus and, and was able to make the move. And we actually took two weeks that time uh, last year at this time and vacation down here just to make sure that what we thought was, was true with Robert's yeah. health really was true. And it turned out it was, he never was sick the whole time we were gone. We even went down into Florida and stayed there for a week just to see if, you know, the, the, the good health and, and good feelings would, yeah. would continue. And then uh, as soon as we got back home from that trip, he, he was very sick. But so at that point, we, we knew that this was what we needed to, uh, to do to, to make this change. So Robert has had a couple of headaches, nothing that's been severe like, a, like an Indiana migraine. Because right. I would say to him, well, are you getting it's an Indiana migraine? Funny how you named it. An Indiana migraine. <laughs> exactly. So I said, are you getting an Indiana migraine? No, it's just a headache. So, but it's so, mm -hmm. it gets so humid here yeah. that sometimes, you know, I'll go outside and just think, oh my goodness, it really gets hot down here. <laughs> so uh, he's, he's doing very, very well. We, uh, we can't even, I couldn't even have enough time on your on your video to be able to tell you what a difference it is it's i can it's feel weird. it i can i yeah. can feel it so it's, 
Yeah. It's a much better situation for all of us. And uh, I'm an only child and my parents moved down here with us. Oh, so all of us are here and yeah. it's just such a, it's such a blessing to see Robert live his life right. the way a child is supposed to. You just have to really, you have to realize it's not anyone's fault. It's mm -hmm. just the way it is. Right. And it's always been one of those things where people, they just think that, Robert was faking it and it's, it's tragic because mm -hmm. when you have an invisible illness, no one ever takes it serious unless it happens to it's them. Very common too in the workplace and in school. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And he, he was bullied not only by students, but by teachers and uh, the principal as well at, as at his old school. Yeah. It was, it really was awful. Robert, congratulations on being on the national junior honor society. <laughs> Thanks. That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Keep up the good work. Thanks. You're welcome. All right, Haley, now back to you. So Haley, what advice would you give others that are suffering from uh, something invisible, an invisible disease, or suffering from migraine disease? Well, I would definitely recommend that they would see the doctor that specified in their disease um, and try to find their trigger so they can avoid it. Also, um, if it's a parent with their child or um, a family member to a family member, just stay, always stay updated with them because you never know what could be going on in their social life right. or um, anywhere else. And... Uh, <clears throat> And just always be on top of what's going on so that you know how to help prevent bad things and um, also get out of bad things and build their self-esteem. Because they're not fun. Right. And, you know, you are so, I don't think luck is the right word, but um, uh, just to have such a great family, you know, that... Um, Robert was able to talk about his experiences with you and that your parents were able to make some tough decisions and really make a difference. And for you doing this great work, I am unbelievably proud of you. I'm sure your parents are as well. I mean, Thank this you. Is, it's amazing for someone to do what you're doing. I know a lot of adults who are advocates. You're the first child. Thank young you. Lady. I shouldn't even call you a child. You're the first young lady um, that, that I know that's come forward this and it just it brings us all here at AMD a lot of joy so we're Thank all you. very proud of you we know you're gonna do great things in your future and I have a question for you what's the reaction you've received so far from the judges when you present this as your uh, platform well normally they're expecting something like uh, cancer uh, cancer awareness or um, like uh, food allergies or something common that they don't really have a personal connection with unless they have it. Right. But for me, migraines means um, it. it's basically my whole brother's life so far. And when we moved away from our house, my brother said that he never had um, any good memories in our old house. It was all being sick. Mm -hmm. And that's a very strong personal connection to me because you want the people that you love to have the best, um, the best life that they can, that they can have. And, um, I'm unique with my platform I and mean, what you see is what you get. Well, it's great work that you're doing Haley. So thank you again. Thank you. All right. And what are you going to be doing on June 21st? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Show you care, wear a pair. There you go. <laughs> All right, Haley, thank you so very much. And I know we'll be hearing many more great things from and about you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for tuning in to Shades of Migraine. For more information about migraine disease, please visit migrainedisorders.org.